Okay, it is um, 6.02, Monday, September 14th, and we are um, going to start the facilities and transportation meeting. And we can start off by uh, say, stating your name, uh, Kevin Strobel. Bucky Scott. Greg Cooper. Julia Olson. Steve Peterson. Okay. Um, you want to go ahead and jump right in there, Steve, or? Sure. Before you start, you know what I wanted to do. I want to make one thing comment. Um, I just want to say, uh, uh, great job. You've had a lot of challenges facing you. I mean, I know everybody in the building has, but I get a chance to say it to you. Um, you know, last minute scheduling uh, brutes down uh, down a person from last year. Uh, technology issues with the transfer, uh, the transfinder software. High volume changes of people just going from you know virtual to in school. I mean, it's just it goes on. Not counting facilities. I just wanted to say. Nice job under the circumstances, and thank you. So, if you want to get you started. All right, so the first item on the agenda this evening is the meeting, uh, is the building safety COVID-19 update. So I want to give everybody a perspective of how things have been going with relation to keeping the building safe and secure for COVID uh, for the students and staff. Um, so I think it's been actually better than I thought or expected it to be for the most part. Uh, we've seen very good support from SSC services, from halters, landscaping maintenance, from nutrition group, from our transportation contractors. Uh, they have done a fantastic job in keeping on top of it, keeping their employees uh, ready and doing things they need to do in order to make this function so that we can do a somewhat normal school year for most of the kids as best we can. Um, it's been a bit of a challenge, um, but all the buildings are being cleaned every day, uh, multiple times throughout the day, multiple locations. They're hitting bathrooms three or four times a day, plus they're going to be deep cleaning every night with pelvic sprayers, uh, SSC services. Um, they've also done uh, increased roaming cleaning during the day, uh, more, more higher uh, impact areas classrooms, wherever it's need be, so that we can make sure that we're addressing issues that save lives. Uh, they've been more attentive to the cafeterias during the operation this year, and not to mention the fact that they're coming in here at night and they're prepping these buildings with fogging, uh, classrooms, high-touch areas, lockers, hallways, <coughs> uh, stanchions, handrails, everything you can think of. Um, they have a schedule for rooms. Uh, they're trying to get a room many times as they can throughout the week. I mean, that's the objective. So that we can give our students and staff uh, some safety and comfort knowing that we're doing the best we can uh, <coughs> with those services. Halter's maintenance has done a fantastic job getting the buildings ready, and I didn't get a chance to see this last month due to the, the way that things worked out. But they deserve a thank you as well. Um, they got all the plexiglass up and all the cafeterias. They changed all the fixtures from all over 400 toilets. They made tape uh, and lines throughout their classrooms um, and a multitude of other things in order to make sure that the buildings were ready for the students to turn in a short amount of time. And it was a remarkable uh, task done. And the same thing goes for our transportation contractors who developed systems and implemented them in order to keep us as safe as they possibly can for kids, uh, utilizing social distancing as much as they can making sure the buses are clean daily, working with the district in order to five buses where we have cases where we have issues with buses as identified even in a possible setting. Um, so they've done a phenomenal job. Not to mention all the transportation work that they did to get us up and running. Um, I'd like to take credit for all that actually most of John Cooke and, and, and Valor Rhodes and Sally Rhodes and Steve and Wayne who chipped in to help us get where we are we're at least transporting yeah, without issue about 90% of the students and non-public students every day. So and, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that person <coughs> here, that they've done a phenomenal job and they've stepped up their game in order to make it. And uh, I, I mentioned that only because these are not district employees, these are subcontractors, and yes, we do pay them, but they've gone above and beyond in a lot of cases. When I call them with issues, they're very responsive. Um, to the point of you know, developed very good relationships. And that goes without saying for all of them. So I'm very happy and excited to have the opportunity to work with these individuals because they make my job a lot easier. And it is a very difficult one. Um, it, it's 
unimaginable. I put in probably closer to 200 hours in the last few weeks. Um, here every weekend through the holiday uh, to the point where my wife was ready to get me to her. So <laughs> I totally understand people's frustrations when it comes to the transportation and things. But can you, can you explain to us what happened? I mean, I don't know if everybody understands exactly what happened. I mean, the system. Yeah, I, I wrote a little timeline. Okay. Um, and I started out with some interesting facts. Did you know that our, our bus transport system transports almost 3,500 students every day? And a lot of people don't understand that. Um, we're transporting not just for our schools, but we're also transporting for Ivan Conception, Works Catholic, and all these schools you don't really know anything about. They handle that as well. So there's a lot of footwork that goes into just getting the normal operation going every day. Um, many of the buses are used for multiple runs, multiple times a day. You'll have a bus that starts the high school in the morning, then it'll run for an elementary school run, then it may run a midday run, and then it comes back. So it's more than just that. These, they're making sure these buses are clean and ready, you know, each interval all the way through the <coughs> day. Um, the district currently utilizes 70 buses by contract. Um, COVID busing, you would think there'd be a big reduction in the amount of students that arrive, but we are seeing some reduction on buses, but not nearly what I expected. I expected more parents to be driving their students, and we're not seeing that. I mean, we do have some buses that are running around here that are, you know, tripped out at 25 kids, and we're only seeing 10 or 15 on the bus, and that's a good thing because it increases social distancing, but at the same time, it's come, become evident to me that parents are relying on our system more than they can rely on themselves with work and, and other responsibilities. So it raises the bar on what we have to do. To that end, we've had probably over 100 students that started out the year virtually or DBPL, and they're coming back. Uh, so that changes your bus programs. And each time these people have to adapt to it, because now we have the social distance of the bus run. So if we bring a student back on a bus where you may have been close to the max amount of number, now you have to add another run and it causes more problems for everyone else. <clears throat> and that has caused a lot of phone calls to be made. This is um, all being done manually right now, is that correct? That is, yes. Because the system broke. Yeah, the, okay. our computer system has been down firmly. Um, it came up for a short time last week, I think Monday through Wednesday and then went down Thursday hard and has not come back. So basically what we've been doing is pen and paper, the old fashioned way, and most of that has been on these gentlemen and, and their workers to make sure that that's kept on track because although I can say, hey, we need a bus here at a certain location, they will have to keep track of all that because at the end of the year, we have to put this all back in the transponder and make sure we're recording it. So it's a lot of footwork without the computer system. Um, and that computer system started to die, I think, just as we went into opening schools. So talk about <laughs> the perfect storm. Um, we, we opened on the 31st, and I know the weekend and week before that, uh, Mr. Copeland and myself were entering the information in by hand because it was not talking from the entry campus. And I, I bet you I entered easily 500 students at one time to get them into the system. And that took a lot of time. And then they have to they get into the system and they have to be geocoded. And then once they're geocoded, they have to be routed in our routing software, which basically adds them to a trip, you know, marking out the location of their home. Um, and assigns them to a bus based on that route. So what's been happening since, since the beginning of the, the, the month of August and maybe before that is it's not speaking with infant campus. So one of the luxuries we have when the system is functioning correctly is, is that if the campus, a parent can log on to their student's ID, and usually their bus transportation will be mixed in right there for them to view. So it alleviates the question of, you know, do they have the right information? They have the same information we're seeing in the <coughs> The problem we run into here is we would fix problems because the computer would not save stuff. It would crash, go back down, come back up, and then you've lost two hours worth of work that you have to start back over again to do. So it's really been a nightmare, and when that happens, then you're losing runs because the trips that are printed off the system and go to the actual operator of the bus are not correct, and then we're missing stops, and that's caused us a whole line of issues. Uh, you know, and I've had so many angry parents and angry phone calls in the last two weeks. Uh, I think it's time any record on 
possibly could have had in any other parts of my career life. Um, not to mention hundreds of emails. And I think this could be best attributed to the fact that there's only one person in this department and you're looking at them. You know, so I'm taking care of 3,500 students. Every building, every table, everything you see is built by myself. You know, I have no full-time help, I have no workers, and I think this is an issue that the board needs to take up and think about. You know, I don't know, you know, you will be hired <coughs> an employee, a secretary to be taking on that responsibility. But at the same time, that secretary is also a receptionist. She's also doing enrollment. She's also putting in purchase orders for me and taking care of other stuff. So there's not a lot of staff. You know, in my department, it's just me. You know, and I have one employee that she works for Mr. Hurley, but he also has things that need to be done, and she also <coughs> is accepting. So if I had one case to apply here, it would be even if it's a part-time employee or a temporary employee, you know, this time of the year when the school reopens for next year, I think it would be move us to make the system run a little better to get somebody else in to help. Um, the problem comes with transportation is that person's not very useful unless they have access to the system and experience with private buses. And that's something where I can admit my major flaw in coming here from where I came from is the fact that I don't know the roads as well as the bus operators do or the transportation <coughs> companies. So I can put a student for pickup at Shed Road and Red Corner Road, but I don't know if that's a safe location for that student to be sitting at and waiting for the bus. Is it a high speed area? Really, your bus drivers and your transportation. You know, I'm relying on their expertise to say, hey, look, we won't put kids in this area. <coughs> we put them in this area because it's safer for the kid, it's safer for the parent. You have new software coming, right? It's being adapted. Did that go in today? Did it work? Right. Okay. So it's, in, again, that'll start to level it out, and then I think you can see where the high water mark is once right. all the systems are in work. And I think added to your day was the whole mess. It, yeah, and, and I mean, part of the problem is like the first day of school, the 31st, I must have had easily over 150 phone calls and right. more than 150 emails. Well, I can only deal with those issues one at a time. Right. And it, each, each phone call is not, hey, this is your child's bus stop now. Each phone call is, you know, well, he goes to dad's house on Tuesday and comes to my house on Wednesday and we need to, you know, there has to be a schedule. It's a long conversation. It takes quite a bit of time. In some cases, it takes 30 minutes. When the computer system is working properly, and the way it's been, it takes a lot longer than that. And how, how long do you normally have to do this? To, to transportation? Usually, you yeah, have the whole summer. Usually, you have all summer. And this and year, we had? We by contract. We're supposed to be able to provide our vendors with a run list and, and fairly good data <coughs> on the beginning of all this. Right. I think it's 30 days. And this year is just so different in, in so many aspects. I think we just, you know, I'm not opposed to what you're asking. I'm just saying that, you know, right. I think we need to get into a, I don't know when normal's going to be again, but, you know, software working, system interfacing with different at campus right. to be able to really determine where that level was. Because prior to that, these guys did it, I mean, last year was pretty smooth. I mean, you well, had Joel. Yeah. Last year, the person who was <coughs> assist um, on this, um, who, um, you know, um, is not here anymore. She, she learned the system the year before. Right. And uh, my understanding was that for three weeks, like the two weeks before school was opened and the one week after, she kind of had all of her other duties kind of taken away from her. Right. You know, and um, so <coughs> that was the assist that the person that was near me she got. Um, whether it's due to COVID, that, that didn't happen, you know, because everybody was trying to scramble to get all of their other pieces, other work done that didn't get done over the summer, or just the fact that, you know, that there was the impact of not having that person, the person that's supposed to be helping you, only working on your thing, you know, with you, um, plus the crash of the system, plus the weight gain, moved to an A and B cohort, it was just like a little bit too much. Yeah. Um, so um, I, it has been, the way it's been explained to the board, I don't know, the way it's been explained to the board in the past is that if 
we have the ability to take somebody who's part of the administrative clerical staff and have them, like, you don't have to do anything else but assist with transportation and, like you said, have access to the system and have the authorization to coordinate with, with, with birds and flying um, and with parents um, for, the, for the two weeks before and the one week after school starts, that that has, has been sufficient. It was only sufficient like last year. We only had, we only had that really um, robust computer system that broke down right. um, for like three years. And um, so um, if you're telling us that that would be sufficient and you didn't get it, that's one thing. If you're telling us that even if I had that, it still wouldn't have been sufficient, that's a different conversation. I think if I had that conversation. Yeah. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Um, I think it's important to note. I don't know what's on. Yeah, but it's yeah. important to note that, um, you know, I'm sure you've dealt with it before. Everybody thinks they know how to run education because they've been in the classroom. It's very similar that everybody thinks they know how to run a transportation system because they've been in the class. And that's not the only issue. Yes, um, workforce is an important part of this, but the reason that Joel was successful in what she was doing was because I taught her how to do it. Yeah. Right. You know? right. So, thank you I mean, that. there there is a, a, a portion of this that we're missing that you cannot sit someone in front of TransFinder and expect them to make this transportation system work. Absolutely. The reason that this transportation system works is because we have people that have local knowledge, first of all, of how to drive a bus. Secondly, of this area that are able to take the tools that TransFinder gives us and form it into a, a system, you know? So I think that's something that sometimes gets missed. Yes, there's a, you know, uh, we can move people around, get people to where they need to be, but then there also has to be that, that additional uh, knowledge that goes with it to be able to actually make it work. And I think okay. that's a big part of it too today. And I don't, I don't want to. I'm not meaning to cut you off. And we're going to run. We're going to run out of time. It's 6:20. Okay, no, but, okay. but I don't want to cut you off either. But um, I think at the end of the day, we need to come up with a plan. And the plan is, is the person that's hired now that doesn't have the experience gets trained by you. And then next year, we take a look at it and say, is that person trained well enough? And can we put the plan together? And are we past last minute pulls, because a lot of this year has been last minute, right? And so I think you compile all those things together, it adds to the level of aggravation next year could be on. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure that this, this year is fair to use as an assessment. Exactly, and, yeah, exactly, and that's my point. I to ask yeah. the same question, well, maybe not, like, just a slightly different question to you, is, is um, if, if things had been normal and we'd all been able to like sit in a room, you know, we've been able to have a couple people sit in a room together and do training in the same room, in the same space, and had known who was coming to school like uh, August 1st, you know, if, if, that had, if those things had been able to happen with the person they need to be trained on, tra TransFinder, um, if we had that, would it have been a lot better or, if we, or would it still have been as difficult as it was. That's kind of what I'm asking. You know, if, 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 it, if, if not for COVID, would we still have had a, a, a disaster? <laughs> and which is not, that's, that's an overstatement. I, I, I think there's other issues that were, you know, involved in there with the, the migration to the new SMS and right. communication between the SMS and Transliner. Right. You know, it was, it was like a, a perfect storm, so to speak, where there were a lot of um, circumstances that, that were not typical. Um, that again, were not allowed for us to fairly assess. And I think, uh, you know, given the curveballs that continue to be thrown at uh, Mr. Biggerstaff and our transportation contractor, Rose and, and Klein, I, I think, you know, we, we were able to, and we muddled through it, but, uh, you know, as best we could with all those curveballs. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm just asking because if, if what you're, if, if what we're saying right now is with the proper support, training, and time allotted, um, can, it, can it be better next year, or are we still going to have a problem and you're still asking for additional, like, um, personnel support, you know, because 
you know, it's, it's very easy to say, oh, this year, you know, we're just going to take a mulligan on this year and it'll get better next year. I know that's, a li that's easy for us to say, but if, if it's somewhat true, then that means that the staffing level at the, at the administration is appropriate. Does that make sense? Um, I think that partially, yes. Okay. However, there is always the concern that exists that let me give you an example. Last school year, we had a student um, on the way to the middle school, I believe, <coughs> that chose to open the bus door and run from the bus, right? Mm -hmm. That was a situation that me as a contractor, I cannot, in good conscience, make a decision on what to do in right. that situation. I need a district employee to make that decision, right? Yeah, you also can't plan for it. That's right, not something I can plan for, right? So I believe that there needs to be someone that is available when there are buses out on the road okay. to make that sort of decision on what to do in that situation. Right. And although Steve has tried his darndest to be able to do that, yeah. with his current job responsibilities, I haven't, he has not been available to me right. all, at all times when I need him to. And the concern is, there is going to be a situation when one of our contractors need to be able to speak with a, a district representative. That is, that not just necessarily a secretary, but someone that has some authority to be able to say, here's what we need to do, here's our game plan for transportation. Okay. And that's, so that's, why, my and that's not just a next year problem, that's a, that's a tomorrow problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got it. Okay. <laughs> that's, and, and, that's my major concern more okay. so than the route. Right. Okay. okay. And it's a good concern. We'll, and we'll note it. Go from there. To move on quickly, I'll just finish up by saying I concur with what he says. And I mean, these are responsibilities that could be disseminated out to level principles. These are responsibilities that could be, you know, in, in my opinion, a lot of cases, I don't know Johnny from Jenny, yeah. because you know, the department I work in. However, you're building principles do know their students and should be available to make these calls. So now we have to be a logistics thing where bridges <coughs> may be set up in each building or there could be other options available to the district okay. um, in order to make that a more safe and reliable system. That's a great point. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll hit with the... There, there was a, one of the things that Mr. Hurley put on this. This was the contract discussion uh, for transportation. Uh, Myself, Mr. Hurley, had met with uh, Wayne Klein and Steve Rhodes uh, about a week ago to go over early negotiations for contract renewal for the transportation companies. Um, I think Mr. Hurley wanted to be here to talk about this this evening, but he's delayed with some other issues. Um, so I just didn't want to fail not to bring it up uh, as an item that the board would need to discuss with him at a later date for the contract negotiations. Uh, if, if he has, uh like the grid notes version for us, maybe you can make a comment in the regular board meeting. Yeah, for, I know he's dealing with something. Yeah, for this evening, I would say that I think the contractors are interested in looking at renewing early okay. um, for the contract. And I know I don't know if Mr. Hurley discussed it about it. Yeah, he briefed me, uh, it's just, just very briefly. Um, and he <coughs> we had a meeting with our contract service providers and indicated that they are interested in. New, uh, an early bird five year extension uh, contract. So um, that is, that's about all he told me. And when it brings the board's attention, that we will be providing some additional details. Yeah. Those things are always um, something handled by the administration. My only question would be was when, you, when you sit down and actually have that meeting, what's the purpose of the early? That's the only thing I would ever ask. You know, What would be the purpose of doing it early versus? in its normal time frame. So we don't have to answer that now, but I'm saying that would be my only question typically in a situation like that. So I'm, sure, I'm sure there's good reason, I'm just, you know. Uh, the last item on the agenda for tonight is the Chiller Tower. Uh, it's a high school cost estimate plan for repairs. Uh, so I don't know if the board's aware, I'm pretty sure that they are, that uh, our main Chiller Tower here for the high school, the main uh, high school section of the building. We always consider this when I look at it, that's your high school section. This side over here, the annex, uh, that's how we separate it in the talk terminology. 
So uh, I was actually on vacation uh, and I received a call from Colin Walter uh, on Wednesday morning. The show that went down uh, that they were investigating. This is what was going on. Uh, it was a little time again because the start of school was looming at that point. Uh, it was two days after the board made the decision. Uh, upon further investigation, they found that the lines going into, from the chiller, into the building themselves had been clogged with debris to the point where they could not get them to repressurize and could not prime the system, the pumping system, for the HVAC system of that side of the building. Because uh, these two buildings are totally separate when it comes to the maintenance systems. Uh, they may share a lot of the electrical supplies and substations, however, your fire systems and your, your mechanical systems are pretty much different for both sides. Uh, so the main chiller tower supplies cold chilled water to the chilled water cooling system for each room throughout that section of the building and this building, but only that section. Is it just cold water or is it also full air? It's, it's both. It's both. It's so both. it's like a big air conditioning unit. It runs full air through a, right. a radiator, so to speak, and the air goes across. And so exactly. Not like forced hot air, but opposite. Cold air. So upon investigation, we determined that there are some serious engineering flaws with the system, the way it was installed. Um, from my point of view, coming in is an outsider looking at the system. And I recognize that when I got here, but you know, so much of what we've been doing uh, since I got here too has been band-aiding a lot of things and then concentrating on the higher impact items. Um, this one I thought we could wait on, but you know, that, that proved me wrong. Uh, so basically, with the clogging of the lines and on a basic chilled water system, utilizing usually your chiller tower is at the highest point of the system. And that chilled water uses the gravity system to feed the main pumps of the chilled water system. And then from there, they're pumped out to all the rooms in the building. Um, in this system here, our chilled water system, our tower, is lower than the actual rooms of the supply. And it does not have a solid state pumping system in the chill tower. So what was happening was, since it's the, the design has this open top, is debris and stuff was forming inside this tank, which you cannot see. Um, and the unit, in my opinion, and this is only my opinion, I can't prove this to be absolute truth, it was not being maintained properly for a, a series of time. Uh, so we went back and looked at the system, the screens were completely clogged where the main intake goes. And then the system, because it's not at the high point, right where your chilled water pumps are, it's running on three, 300 feet plus of horizontal piping, five inch, from in through one part of the building and all the way around the hallways and down into our main pump station before it's actually going out to the building itself, which to me is a serious design flaw. <coughs> And I don't know why it was done that way, but chances are it was installed that way when the building was put in. And I mean, say that about almost any building. Oh, I any, any institutional I do, have, I do have a question regarding that. <laughs> is, is the chiller itself not working? Because if it's just the lines, you can just get it pumped with higher head pressure and you can pump it a thousand feet. I'm, and these, I'm not saying that you do. I'm saying right. you know, there, there's options there, clean the hoses out. And, right. I mean, we're, we're, is, that, yeah, is the chiller not working? Is that what it is? And I'm not, I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying, is the chiller not working? The chiller it's, is working. Okay. It, it, can, it can work, but the amount of work that's done to compensate for the, the flaw in the design has taken a toll on Okay. Taking a serious toll. On the chiller itself. On the chiller. Okay, I got you. That's, what I was, that's where I was heading. How bad is the chiller? Right. I mean, if, if you had the pump installed properly on the roof, Right. You never have the issue of the water not being able to get to the pumping system. In this case, it actually killed us twice. But not only did it fail, but then it failed, and then a week later, because of all that debris stuck in the pipes, it actually burst the pipe in the A section of the building. And about 5, I think it was 5.30 in the morning, on Monday morning, the week before school starts, the pipe fails and floods seven rooms and the tech labs on, on that side over there for the chiller. Um, costing us about $32,000 in ServPro repairs in order to get the building up and running for the first day of school, um, which was a phenomenal in itself because it, we did it in a week, basically, to get the building up and running. Um, so then on top of that, now we've had to rent a temporary chiller, 
which came in at a cost of $21,000. Um, <coughs> it held on at $12,000 a month. So I mean, I know we're looking at a high price tag here on this unit, but I'm going to have to run this temporary chiller until early October when I can shut the AC off. Is that included in this? Yeah, I mean, we're looking at two options here. So this option basically would be to take the existing chiller unit, pick it with a crane, mount it on the roof, and then have it gravity fed the way it should be, reducing all that 300 feet of piping down to a run of maybe 20 feet plus, which is normal, and at a higher pipe size, allowing the pool of chilled water to run through the system more efficiently, cost less money, uh, in the long run, because I imagine utilities are probably split here because uh, that pump had to ride, run so hard for so long to try to keep uh, up with the system demand, especially during the hotter months. Um, the other option is, is we buy a new unit. And the company is saying that, you know, I know that this is 92000 roughly just for the, the unit, the piping to be moved. Um, but then you're also talking $5,000 of engineering costs and another 5000 for roofing um, to be done to do this. So you're probably actually looking at 102000 more than 92. The other option is if you buy another unit and then retire the one that's out there, you're talking plus 70000 for another unit. So this is the cheaper of the two options in my mind. This is the cheaper. So the new, the new chiller is 170 I can't. A, a new chiller would be roughly 102 plus 70000 Oh, okay, the plus the seven on top of it. Right. Yeah, when this stuff breaks, if it's not maintained, it ain't cheap. All right, it's not. I agree. And, uh, you know, this, unfortunately <coughs> enough, I mean, we're going to live through the rest of this year, and I wouldn't even push the temporary chill until mid October, if it's not for COVID. So, so my, my question is, if you spend 102 now, is it fixed? when we have to spend the 70 later when this chore goes bad. That's my only question. You know what I mean? If you think about it, because if you got to bite the bullet now, maybe you bite the bullet now and put the new chore up. If this chore is on its last leg, and I, I have no idea long. I wouldn't say it's on its last legs, but yeah. it's, it's taken a toll. I mean, all the debris that's in there, most of it is from the chiller itself, from right. lack of maintaining over the last right. I don't know when it was going <clears> in. It's not flushable or anything like that? No. Okay. And this price would consider a right. restoration of the existing tank and unit because it's leaking everywhere. Right. Uh, it's just a disaster. I mean, I'm trying to present options for the board because I know that budget is an issue, especially with the amount of money we spend on for COVID. I guess my question, I'm sorry. Do we, do we know when that show is, uh, how old it is? It's according to the manufacturer, and they were the original manufacturer of that unit. Uh, unit is more than five years old, so we can't determine by the Did they install it? They, they, installed they it? sold us the unit. Oh, they didn't um, install it, though. They did not <laughs> install it. It was done by another contractor. I'm oh, sorry. I was going to get no, no, no. Well, I mean, look, my experience, I've been in government for a long time, right. including the military, and, and here's the thing. With mechanical equipment especially, you may be able to get a cheaper price from a builder, builder or contractor when you put it out to bid. I'm sure you've seen this too, but it's not always what you need. Right. It's the price, that, you know. So, you know, as my office would say, penny wise, dollar stupid. So we could maybe count our pennies and not put a new unit and pipe it correctly and just go with what we have. But in the long run, you're probably better off spending money now because the costs are not going to get cheaper. I guess at the end of the day, I mean, we'd like your recommendation. You know what I mean? It's like, here's price A, here's price B, and we recommend this one because. Does that make sense? I mean, then that way, you know, that way you can make that decision whether or not you want to go that direction. And if you spend this 102 and you get next year, it, it, it blows, it, go something down. else goes, what's the additional cost of having to buy another unit? Is everything else done and you drop another unit in its spot? Has all the other work been done? I, I don't know any of those. So choices and then the recommendation then yeah I think we just, we're gonna have to do something for sure yeah you can't keep renting one for twelve thousand dollars per month that's for sure it's a lot of money <clears throat> but I do want to make sure I thank everybody that was here all of both bus companies just want to say thank you because I know there's been a lot of challenges out there and as well as for everybody else that's out here dealing with this stuff but just a specific segue way to say thank you for what you've done um, anybody else have anything I believe that's it. Going once. I would just say oh. one more. 
I do. Uh, before I conclude, and that is, you know, we're doing the best we can, but there are still a lot of struggles. Um, you know, you have detractors in any job that you're in, and there are detractors here. You know, that you find fault with everything you're doing. But I think, you know, speaking for the people that are represented here tonight, I think they have done a phenomenal job, at least on the part of the district, as best they can. I mean, it's never going to be a perfect situation. Um, and there are things that are going to be missed over time. There's just no way to get around it when you're talking about the size of the operation that you're running. So um, I just want to say thank you to everybody, including the board, for putting up the patience. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of phone calls and uh, concerns from board members and parents in the district. And, you know, I know that's not an easy thing to feel, believe me. <laughs> you're, feeling a lot, you're feeling a lot worse than I am. Um, I, do have, I do have one question. I forgot to ask it. Um, um, over the annex, the new the new stuff we had installed, is that complete now? Or I'm sorry. The, that, we're, with the new air conditioning, we're over the weight room in the annex? It's, it's just about complete. Um, the roofer was in, I think, approximately about a week ago, wasn't he? Made the penetrations, and Berkshire and Cap was doing the install. Uh, I'm suspecting that they're going to meet Dr. Cooper's deadline. I think he wanted to be able to be in there as soon as the uh, 18th or 19th uh, to get the rest of the other work yep. done. So I think we're on target to do that. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. And that concludes our meeting. Uh,